Let's talk about serious risks to your asset allocation strategy that if you don't understand, could derail your retirement. I've been a financial advisor for over 25 years. I've met with hundreds of wealthy families along the way. It's been my experience that the majority of investors simply do not understand the risks that they're taking when it comes to their portfolio. Generally, investors don't know how much they can lose if things get really bad, and they definitely don't appreciate sequence of returns risk. In this video, I'm gonna show you how much you should expect to lose whenever we get the next recession or if interest rates just keep climbing higher and higher. Unlike a lot of other channels on YouTube, this channel does not have a sponsor and it will never have a sponsor. We don't need that here. No conflicts of interest. Instead, what I'm offering you is objective, truthful, helpful data. For today's analysis, we're gonna use return information from SPY and AGG ETFs. And for the record, I don't receive anything from BlackRock. They don't know me from the man in the moon. Why do I like SPY and AGG? Number one, they're extremely cheap. AGG is only three basis points, SPY is nine basis points. Number two, they're extremely liquid. Lots of money in these two ETFs. And number three, there is a lot of trading history. These ETFs have been around for a long time and it gives us good insights into what to expect in down markets. Knowing how much you can lose before a down market occurs is a key component of a successful financial plan, my opinion. Far too many investors and unfortunately many financial planners don't have a strong grasp of what to expect with various asset allocation strategies if a recession were to show up unexpectedly. This video is gonna help you understand just how much you can lose under different asset allocations and what to expect going forward. That's even more important. What can we expect over the next 10 or 15 years? I'm gonna show you. To help you on your journey for selecting an asset allocation, we're gonna have a quick and I promise simple statistics overview with respect to portfolios. What we're looking at here is the normal curve, okay? And your portfolio is going to have an expected rate of return. And then if you look at information on your portfolio, you might see on some of your reports something called standard deviation. It's a measure of volatility. All I want to show you here is that 95% of portfolio returns, historical returns, are going to fall between minus 2 and plus 2 standard deviations, 95.5% of the time. So let's translate that into the S&P 500, and then we'll take a look at different asset allocations so you can get a sense of what does standard deviation mean for different portfolios. Again, I promise to keep this simple. In the last century, the annual return standard deviation for this S&P 500 has been approximately 20, 20%. So let's say that we expect a mean return on the S&P 500 of 10% going forward. If we had 10% is our mean return, then one standard deviation would be 10 plus 20, which is 30, and two standard deviations would be 10 plus 40, which would be 50%. So in a two standard deviation event, the S&P 500 return would be 50% only about two and a quarter percent of the time would we expect a return over 50. On the downside, if we have 10% is our mean return on the S&P 500, minus one standard deviation would be minus 10%. Minus two standard deviations would be two standard deviations minus 40 plus a positive 10. That gets us to minus 30%. Only two and a quarter percent of the returns we would expect to be beyond minus two standard deviations. So what we're looking at here is that the normal range, keywords, for the S&P 500 returns in any given year, 95.5% of the time, your return range could be as far as minus 30 or as high as plus 50. 
Let's test that data, that theory that I'm putting out there with the last century of S&P 500 returns. In the last century, there have been only five two plus standard deviation events on the S&P 500 and its predecessor index. Five years out of 100, 5%, almost exactly what we would expect from the normal distribution. Recall that 95.5% of the time, we're estimating in my simple analysis to be between plus 50% and minus 30%. And what do you know? We have five years out of 100 that are beyond plus 50% or minus 30%. The most recent was 2008 at minus 37%. So this approach works to calculating how much you could expect to lose under normal conditions for the S&P 500. Now let's extend this thinking to different asset allocations so that you can get an idea of how much you could lose or make under various asset allocation strategies. Before we look at future expected returns, let's quickly look at losses for SPY AGG portfolios in 2008 and 2022, the worst years in the last 25 years, calendar years. If you had 2080 portfolio in 2008, you lost 1%. That's 20% SPY, 80% AGG. If you had that portfolio in 2022, it was particularly painful for bond investors. You lost 14.1%. 3070 minus 55 in 2008, minus 14.6 in 2022. 4060 minus 10 in 2008, minus 15.1 in 22. 5050 minus 14.5, minus 15.6. 6040, 18.9, minus 16.1 in 22. 7030, minus 23.4 in 2008, minus 16.6% 6 in 2022. 8020 portfolio, a lot of volatility there, minus 27.9 in 2008, minus 17.1 in 2022. If you are planning on a 25 or 30 year retirement, it is very likely that you will see at least two and maybe as many as four events like 2008 or 2022. Therefore, it is very important that you select an asset allocation strategy that you are comfortable with, with respect to the downside loss potential. You wanna select an asset allocation that has a loss threshold that you feel good about. That matters because all financial planning software assumes you will stay invested 100% of the time and you will not market time. If you want to improve the odds of success for your financial plan, pick the right asset allocation the first time so that when the next recession comes, you will not panic and sell at the bottom like so many people did in 2008 and the spring of 2020. If you do that, if you sell when the market's down, you're going to mess up your retirement plan. It's very important that you stay invested for the duration of your retirement. Now let's talk about how to plan for the future with different asset allocations. What we're looking at here is the risk to reward scatter plot for a range of asset allocations using SPY and AGG. 2080, SPY to AGG, 3070, 4060, 5050, so on and so forth. And on this scatter plot, we have the 10-year annualized standard deviation for each of these portfolios. And for reference, I've put the S&P 500 ETF, SPY, and AGG on here as well, so that you can see a range of standard deviations. As we move from left to right, the standard deviation is increasing as the stock exposure is increasing, and that means we'll have more volatility. Here's an idea of what to expect going forward for different asset allocations using the historical standard deviation numbers. What we're calculating here is a range of return scenario, minus two standard deviations and plus two standard deviations for these different asset allocations. I've come up with an expected return column based upon a 7% total return for SPY and a 4.5% total return for AGG. 
For example, if we look at the 60-40 portfolio and we use the historical standard deviation, we would be at minus 14%, two standard deviations below an expected return of 6% and 26% top line return, two standard deviations above a 6% expected return. 95% of our return experience going forward is likely to be between these two numbers. A couple other things that I'd like to point out. If you are going through financial planning with a financial planner or a robo-advisor, at some point you're gonna answer a series of questions regarding how you feel about risk. If you answered seven on a one to 10 risk score, for example, the software would assign you right here to this 70-30 portfolio, 70% stock market, 30% bond market. And here is what you could expect for a range of returns. Minus 18 would be two standard deviations down, plus 30.3, two standard deviations up. 5% of the time we would expect you to be beyond 30.3 or minus 18. You should also know that standard deviations are not set in stone and they change over time. Therefore, these standard deviations that we're looking at over the last 10 years, I think they're a little light. And so for planning for the future, I think it's a good idea to move the standard deviation up a little bit, which will widen out the range of returns. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Here is a range of future return scenario that I've developed for different asset allocations using SPY and AGG. The expected returns are the same from what we saw in the previous slide, but I've adjusted the standard deviations up by 1% for each one of these allocations. So we now have a greater dispersion of returns. Our range of returns has grown. For example, with the 70-30, a 7 on a 1 to 10 risk scale, like so many people are these days, you should be comfortable with a 20% loss unexpectedly in any given year. That would be two standard deviations down. And two standard deviations up is 32.3. Anything in between is what we could expect to happen 95.5% of the time. That would be normal. So if you're not comfortable with minus 20, then you're not a seven on a one to 10 risk scale. And that's very important. Put it in your terms also. Whatever your dollar value is for your portfolio, take 20% off of it and that will tell you how much you could potentially lose in any one given year if you're a seven. If you had a million dollars, would you be comfortable with an unexpected $200,000 loss? If the answer is no, then you're not a seven. Maybe you're a six or a five or a four, but you wanna base that decision, your asset allocation decision, upon your threshold for losses. Now let's talk about the other serious risk with asset allocation that most people just ignore. It's called sequence of negative returns risk. This is the year 2000. We had three negative return years in a row for the S&P 500, minus nine, minus 12, minus 22. So if we get a sequence of negative returns event, everything changes. All financial planning, risk profile questionnaires, and robo-advisors, et cetera, financial planners, they just focus on one-year volatility. And up to this point in this video, we have been discussing one-year volatility, annual losses and gains. But you need to know that you will eventually, most likely, have a sequence of negative returns event at some point in your 25 or 30 year retirement. And when that happens, it changes everything. If you lose 9% and then 12%, it's not a lot in any one given year, but when you daisy chain these negative losses, you end up losing a whole bunch more than you ever thought you could. So you need to have this in the back of your mind. Sequence of negative returns event risk is very real. The odds of it happening in a 25 or 30 year retirement are very high. If you're planning on a 30 year retirement, your odds are 
that there will be at some point in your retirement a sequence of negative returns event. So when you select your asset allocation strategy for your retirement, don't just focus on annual range of returns. If you are merely focused on the potential for losses in one year, and let's say you select an asset allocation that has a downside threshold of 15%, but then you have a sequence of negative returns event and you end up losing 20 or 25%, you're going to be really unhappy. So you want to be mentally prepared for the possibility that something like this will happen at some point in your retirement. And be sure that when you select an asset allocation, you are comfortable with the idea that you may exceed the annual volatility, i.e. you might exceed the potential for losses that you think are the, are, are the extreme in any one year. You might go beyond that if there is a sequence of negative return years. Here's the data on sequence of returns risk. Since 1871, we've had 125 30-year investment periods, equivalent to a retirement. Periods with sequence of returns risk, 122. Only three periods out of 125 did not have sequence of returns risk. Therefore, based on the past data, the probability for sequence of returns risk is 97%. If you have questions about your investments, please give my office a call. We would be happy to give you a second opinion on your portfolio. If you like this content, please share it with your friends. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it gets you thinking, helps you better analyze your investments, and overall improve your family's financial plan.